today we got special guest Terrence Plummer the second. Big Terrence Plummer. Big Terrence Plummer big, the second. Big four four. Yes, sir. Big four four right here live from the Orlando Guardians, right? So how was it, man? How was your what is this your second season in the XFL? Yeah, this is my second season. Hey man, first off, shout out to y'all boys, Big Philly and Turbo. Got me on the Miami fan talk, you know. These boys been showing me love all year, man. So we we had a couple times we tried to hop in, we didn't get it happen, so we making it happen right now. So it, it feels good. I had to shout y'all boys out first. Yes, yeah, sir. No, man, you been putting that work in, bro. I was like, yo, I remember I was sitting there with Ter- I was Turbo, we were watching the first game, and he was like, yo, bro, we gotta watch the man. I said, what's up? He's like, I gotta watch Terrence for four. I ride back. I was like, so we sitting there, we chilling, but we're on the couch, we watching it, and all of a sudden he made that first play. And I think it was a fumble. If I'm not mistaken, it was a forced fumble or a sack. It was one of those two things. Nah, it was a, it was a, um, a sack. It was a sack. It was a sack. And I was like, okay. Yo, <laughs> yo. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, if you try to bring him on the show, he goes, yeah. I said, I bet. Record it. Let's blow him up. And that's what we that's did. Low. That's yeah. love. That's love, man. That's love. Hey, man. Hey, I support anybody that has a journey that is trying to push themselves. And propel themselves for the future, for their future. You feel me? And you sure. gotta support stuff like that. You feel me? Because you put in that hard work. And yeah, your your route might not be the most conventional at the current moment, but nonetheless, it's your journey. And that's most definitely, most journey. definitely, for sure. You know, and that's another thing. I love the shirt that you have, right? Trust the process, enjoy the journey. Right, and right, I love, right. I love that saying, bro. You, and it, it speaks volume, bro. Like, yo, you gotta trust the path that he puts you on, and, and and enjoy it. Just enjoy the time that you have in this game because just as quick as you you win it, you out. Yeah, yeah. You know, most definitely, game, most definitely. Sooner rather than later, you know, your time will come where you're gonna have to step away from the game eventually. One day, whether it's ten years from now, five years from now, I don't or know, tomorrow, I'm already forty years from now. But <laughs> but you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, for sure. Enjoy it. And I, I love how you said that, man. And, I, and that's why you know, I was like, yo, bro, nah, you, 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 you tend to gravitate towards people like that. You feel me? And like, you know, especially when you want to motivate yourself, you tend to gra- gravitate towards people who motivate themselves and others to pursue uh, or grow something bigger. That's what we're trying to do here on Miami Fan Talk Network. We're trying to grow some the place that fans are building because it ain't built yet, but we're building it right, right. now. We low budget production, but eventually we high budget production. Yeah, yeah, for That's sure, for sure. We got to start from the ground bottom. Exactly, bro. Hey, man, we all learning, man. And That's why that's the fun part. But uh, let's get into it, man. So, tell me, what got you into football? What what started the passion for the game? Yeah, bro. Um, I think I think the, my passion for football came from just a passion for all type of sports. So I grew up playing baseball. I just grew up with my mama, and my mama was like, she she could she could handle baseball, right? Just give me a bat, you know what I mean? Some gloves and some cleats, and I can go out there and play. It ain't too much crazy, you know what I mean? It wasn't too far fetched for. Me. I played it. I played everything in baseball, bro. I won the World Series when I was twelve in the U Triple S A World Series out there in Tennessee. We played against in the in the championship game. We played against Germany, and uh, but we had beat. We 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 won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You triple SA World Series. And um yeah, I started off playing baseball first. I didn't start playing football till I was twelve. But growing up in Florida, bro, that's what we did, bro. Like I always played football at the park, bro. We always play uh, you know, jackpot and yeah, pickup games, you know. Or everything, bro. You know what I mean? I Crazy, bro. Like, and we grew up playing tackle loco, man. You know, one ball, about 50 of us out there. One person got the ball. He got to carry the ball. Everybody trying to hit him. So, like, you know, you know, you know what I mean? People people call it a different game. Some of our fresh to carry or, you know, hot ball. But. You know, and. I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah, I'm straight, bro. I'm straight. Well, Which I understand I'm, I'm ain't slow. for everybody. I wasn't the most athletic person. You feel me? This dude still says I'm still on IR, and it's been like eight years. <laughs> that boy still. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, man, I, I've always admitted it, right? Like I 
I played I played at high school where I played I played offensive line. Although I didn't want to play offensive line, I wanted to play defensive line, but they tricked me and they wouldn't let me switch over to D tackle. But not saying that I was gonna do anything though. Like I didn't think I was gonna do shit anyway. But I ran like my forty yard dash. I'll probably still be running with the forty. That's you not. Oh, you oh you ran, so, you ran a forever. I, I ran a forever exactly. <laughs> 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 I'm slow. It's all right, you know? but that's I, straight, though, bro. In practice, I played for Flanagan. So when I when I when I it was JV too, but when I remember my first time I played or when, I, when they switched me to D tackle, the first play I got to the quarterback, and I was like, bro, oh, I can see myself. I started feeling myself. I was like, a little bit too much. I was like, ah, you know, you gotta calm down, Phil. So they started yelling at me because I hit the quarterback. <laughs> oh, yo, you can't hit the quarterback in practice. <laughs> yo, yo. You can't do that. That's their prize possession, bro. I, yo, yo, that's that a red jersey, first. man. You can't. It's you, red bean stop. That was my first contact sport. <laughs> you, you fuck around and get cut. <laughs> yo, GA at the, at the professional level, don't do that, bro. And then the moving back to offensive line because I hit the quarterback. I'll tell y'all a funny story about that later. All right, so you start off in baseball. You played every position. Yeah. Um, I never, I never played for like, like a team, but I played a lot of pickup. I mean, I'm Cuban, so naturally. Yeah, for sure, of, for sure. A lot of baseball. For um, sure. But I, I, I used to enjoy playing like first base. Um, I used to play. I used to enjoy like at pickup games. I pitch a little bit, like closing pitcher, like towards the end of the game. I'd switch over and pitch, but stuff like that. I never had power though. I had a lot of contact. I had a lot of contact with the ball, great contact. But yeah, was, yeah. Something where I could drive and, 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 and add some power to it to add some of the depth and distance. But it was a lot of fun, though. Man, baseball is a fun sport to play. Real tough to watch. Yeah, tough to watch, man. It's tough to watch. It's real fun to play, but watching just could be, could be dreadful, you know. But, you know, watching a Major League Baseball game ain't, ain't no better time, man. You get a couple brews, you know what I mean, get the chilling. You ain't really got to pay too much attention, so it's a good social sport, you know what I mean? Yeah, you chill in, you talk a little bit, you know, you catch up on social. Like, I went to the for the home opener for the Marlins. Um, actually, you see the Marlins rookie pitcher right over here. That's oh, that's hard, hard, yeah. So, yeah Y'all jersey wall hard back there. Y'all a little off with that Mark Andrews, though. Y'all a little off with that Mark Andrews, though. <laughs> hey, this is the rawest jersey right here, my boy. The Mark Andrews? Yeah, this is the right. The Raven is the only one that makes this wall right here, dog. That wall, I feel you. I feel you. I feel you. you. Me, so, I like the so Ravens all too. These, all these jerseys, they're uh, given. They're gonna get given away. So. Uh, oh, for real. Of, yeah. So no, no, like so some shows like that you watch like because there's a lot of podcast shows, uh, for a lot of different fans, uh, a lot of different teams, right? So, so like a lot of them require like donations or. Um, they require like a, a raffle or something like that. But with us, you know, you just as long as you subscribe, you get entered in a drawing. There's going to be what, four drawings on the road to a thousand subscribers. Uh, and uh, basically, as we go, the people that win, we pick them off the wall or the, the, the field. Yeah. Just keep going, and then no, and all you have to do literally is just subscribe. That's it. So. Oh man, that's a major deal. Yeah, yeah, that's a nice little deal, there, man. I got X there. I got X, hopefully your future teammate. Hopefully. <laughs> I, I got Nick Needham. Hopefully your other future teammate. Right, right, right. And so, you know, Mark Andrews, uh, he all right. He could be your future teammate also, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hey, bro, they didn't extend past what he was. Yeah, because, you know, they just got that uh, dude out of uh, Clemson. Well, and they brought in uh, Raekwon from yeah. last year. Yeah, Roquan. Roquan got that big bag. Roquan, yeah. Big bag. Yeah, get him big mad. Well, but, yo, Patrick Queen, I was like, oh. Yo, Patrick Queen gonna, Patrick Queen gonna fall on his feet, though, if it don't work out with Baltimore. Trust me on that. He'll be a, back, be a good backer. Yeah, but I want to see what he's gonna, he's gonna require for, because uh, uh, his contract's up after next season, so. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be, it's gonna be crazy what he's looking for his, his money at the table, for sure. That's why they got that. That's why they got that. That's why they got that young boy in that third round, man. Just in case. <laughs> hey, hey, bro, you know what? Dog, that was some BS though. How he fell so far, bro. 
Yeah, he had a first round grade, didn't he? That's a disrespect. How did that that man fall that far? Yeah, bro. Even my fins, bro, I was pissed off at. Don't get me wrong, I like the corner we got, uh, Sam, but damn, we could have had a better linebacker. But then again, it would have fed into the narrative that all these people be saying about Jerome Baker. But I like Jerome Baker. I think he's that dude. But that's my opinion. That is what it is. All right. Jerome Baker, now, nice now, too. Now that we finally have an LB on the show, man, <laughs> you feel me? Yo, can you let the people know how hard it is to play linebacker? Nah, you got to be. Well, you went pro. You went pro with it with that at the top the NFL. You went to what? Uh, Washington and yeah, Minnesota, right? Yeah, Washington. Yeah, so yep, yep, yep. The highest level, man. Like, talk about that one. Yo, bro. Um. You, it ain't really hard when you've been doing it for so long, bro. It's kind of my personality, you know what I mean? So, like, like Mike linebacker, inside linebackers, we usually the quarterbacks of the defense, so we just look at the game a little differently. So, like, my part of my job is, you know, you know, stopping the run, playing the pass, you know, that's 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 that's, that's football. I do that. I love that. But the, you know, the the hardest part about it is, is really trying to get everybody lined up. And trying to be like the quarterback, you know, I got to be the type of guy that lets my team, my defense know what's going to happen before the play happens. You know what I mean? Like, that help everybody be better. Like, if I tell my defense to tackle that guard from the pool or, like, I notice that the quarterback giving out a, a, a line protection for pass, you know what I mean? I can let my DBs know it's pass. So that's one less thing they got to think about. And we all working towards the same goal, which is getting the ball or stopping them from making the first down. You feel me? So I think that's probably the harder part about playing linebacker. Playing linebacker fun for real, for real. It's one of the funnest positions because we the hitters. Side line, side line, yeah. Come on, man. Yeah, bro. We the we the hitters. We smack it. Man, we the hitter, we smack it, bro. Right, right. We smack it. We smack it, boy. I agree with you, bro. That's really how we feeling out there, man. I just I just find it funny though, you know. And don't get me wrong, play linebacker right but like as a fan's perspective i just find it funny when other fans say oh we need to get rid of somebody minus no embedogany because no embedogany is, is is a team but minus him everybody else right so like for instance jerome baker right they're like oh i think he's out of position to play the mic to play in the center that's a that's that's a lot of responsibility you have as a linebacker as as an athlete a player because again, like you just said, you're the quarterback, right? You're the quarterback of the defense. You got to be able to, to 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 recognize what it is that that they're going to run and trust the game plan that your coaches set up for you based off of the film and study that they did on those teams uh, coming into that game. You get what I'm saying? So it's like the quarterback, right? Everybody blames two about everything in their mama, right? Same thing with Jerome Baker. Same thing with other linebackers in the league. Yo, you go out there and try to do what they do and then come back and say all the shit you be saying on these shows. Yeah. <laughs> you got to put respect out there. They got to put some respect on these linebackers because, bro, that's not an easy position to play. And it's a lot of responsibility yeah. to, be, to do what it is that they got to do. Coach caught the defense was a 3-4, bro. And boy, was I lost. <laughs> <laughs> Me, I, I started off playing defensive end. I recently switched up to linebacker. So, like, I'm still learning, like, the rope. But that shit, that shit is crazy, man. Like, I don't know. I just love Hey, hey, a key, hey, a key, a key, a key, a key to linebacker. The key to linebacker is you got to know where your key at. If you know where your key at before the play start and see how the key work, then you kind of know what you got to do. Like, if your key comes straight at you, then you got to step towards your key. But if your your key step away from you, if your key step away from you now, you need to look to the direction of where your key stepping because that's gonna let you know the next part. You feel me? So you just gotta just kind of take it when you look at your key, whoever that is, is the running back, if it's the tackle, 
you know, if the, if you if you on the end of the line of scrimmage as, as a linebacker and you see the tackle go down, you get what I'm saying. He don't block near you. That means something coming to you. You get what I'm saying. They trying to they trying to influence you, right? Oh, he's stepping down, so I need to shoot down behind him. No, buddy, buddy, pulling from the side over there. You better be ready. It's all it's it's, it's all a play. It's all a trick within. So, like, if you could just read your keys, that might help you out back a little bit, bro. Make make the transition a little smoother. Start watching film. So, yeah, <laughs> yo, that <laughs> film turbo that, that that film that's where it's at. Turbo, I'm telling you, that film. you watch that film. We start watching film, we start to rewind, press play, but rewind, go back. Okay, see what he just did there, right? Rewind, go back. That should last for like two weeks. It's a lot, bro. And then, like, even me, like, I tell turbo, I want to be a coach. My, my day job doesn't allow me to do it. Right, but he like he told me too. He's like, "Yo, Phil, you can't be a coach like for these grown ass men. Like, you can't be an NFL coach." I said, "Maybe college, but I think you'll be a high school coach." And I go, "Why?" It's because you yell too much. You start talking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm one of those hey, coaches. Phil, you can't be yelling. I'm hey, Phil, sure. you can't yell at the franchise, bro. They might get you up out of there in the NFL, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> Saving with the Dolphins, bro. He went there. He, he, you know, he went. He went from college level to the NFL level back in the early 2000s. Didn't get his quarterback. There's a lot of like ex uh, retired or ex NFL Dol- uh, Dolphins that came out publicly and said, "Yo, yeah, he'll come in the locker room, start yelling at us, and we're like, yo, we ain't in college, bro. We we got money, like, yo, <laughs> back up.' And what did he do? He left one back to Alabama. That boy went to Alabama, man. I don't blame him. <laughs> some, don't get me wrong. There's some coaches, bro, that they, they they like the power trip. But then you got those those real coaches, guys like, you know, we've heard a lot about Andy Reid from some of the guys that we've had on the show. Um, uh, I actually I, I had the pleasure of meeting Chris Lemons, uh, who plays currently right now for the Kansas City Chiefs. And I was like, yo, is, that how, is it true? Like, I had Jeff Dallin back. He played his final like season with him uh, in Philly. How was how is he in Kansas City? He's like, yo, bro, bro. he one of those dudes, bro, those 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 player coaches, you know, like somebody who really cares and, and genuinely has interest in the player, uh, and, and then you can connect with him as a coach. And I'm like, is it true he loses his burgers every every win? He's like, yeah, it's true. And <laughs> <laughs> we're a burger eater, man. <laughs> Get that boy Andy a cheeseburger, man. He got another dub. <laughs> <laughs> he gonna look like one eventually. He gonna look like Ronald McDonald. Yeah, man. <laughs> that, that, that big purple one, the old mascot. Nah, bro, it sucks. So it's cool, man. Like you know, you have different type of coaches in the league. Um, you know, since we're talking about the league now, I guess. Uh, tell me about like your time in Washington and in Minnesota. Um. And how some of those, that experiences that you've had there and the stuff that you've learned at that level, how it transitioned to the XFL. And tell me the differences between the XFL and the NFL and the competition play. Yeah, man. So um, those first two years in the NFL, that was great, man. It was a blur, though. They went by so fast. You know what I mean? I was real young, and um, I had a real big chip on my shoulder because I felt like I should have been drafted out of college. So, you know, when I was coming in, bro, every day was game day, bro. And it wasn't nothing like being out there at, uh, at training camp with D.C. Uh, it'd be like 20, 20 25,000 fans out there every day. Like, you, you feel like it's a game every day. And I was taking it as such. And then we got to the preseason and I was balling. But the thing is, what I didn't realize was is that when I did make the team, that it's, it's not over. You know what I mean? It's not time to relax. It's actually time to kick it in the overdrive even more. So... You know, I think I learned that the most in the NFL is you can never get you can never get comfortable in the NFL, especially me being an undrafted player. Uh, you know, we gotta earn everything that we get. You know, what I mean, it's, it's millions of us trying to get a job and an opportunity to play. You know, a game that we all love since we were shorty. So, you know, I think that's what I took the most out of my time of being in um, Washington, Minnesota. A lot of lessons. You know, you, 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 everybody call it L's. I got cut from Minnesota six times. I got cut from Washington twice, you know, and they brought me back. But, you know, I was looking at those as losses, but really there was lessons just teaching me, you know, this is what it could be. This game could be gone. At the end of the day, bro, you was a part of that 1% that made it to the league. 
for sure. Like, hey, for sure. Right, right. The same guy that's going to get drafted in the first round, they get the little four years, you feel me, their contract, and then they go bust. And you got that undrafted dude that's coming and take your team to the box. So at the end of the day, but going to. Most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah, and, and you know, and you know, it's, it's easy to say, like, I used to be like, and it was hard for me at time too, Turbo, because at time people be like, bro, you made it. But like, you know, as a shorty, you ain't thinking about just making it, bro. Like I wanted to be a Hall of Famer. Like I wanted to be, you know, I grew up watching Ray and Ed and 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 and, and um and Junior Seau and, and, and Zach, Tam- Zach Thomas and all them boys. Like I wanted to be like them. So my work ethic, yeah, all the grades, you feel me? So I wanted to work, put my work ethic like them. So when it did work out for me for the first time, you know, it really caused me to like really go back into the go back into the uh the lab and really get to work. And that's when I went to Canada. I went to Canada for three years and I won a great cup up there. And that was that was pretty good for me too. And that's how I ended up back in the XFL. You know, we were very fortunate, like all three of us, because you know, the guy there's a there's a gap, but it's not huge. But we all had the the ability and the, the opportunity to watch in my opinion, the, the greatest generation in my Hello? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. There you go. There you go. Now you good, my boy. Uh, we, we had the the opportunity, not the ability, the opportunity um, to watch the, in my opinion, the greatest generation of linebackers in the NFL. Right? So you have guys like Erlacher, Zach Thomas, Ray. Um, I mean, even though Ed was a safety, that dude played like a fucking linebacker, in my opinion. Um, yeah, he the great, he the greatest safety all the time. Another dude, right? See, but played so hard, he played like a linebacker. He had no fear. And you can classify them in today's game as linebackers. If yeah, for sure, man. Games, they're linebackers. Yeah. They're a little undersized, but they better because they can hit. So, you know, like you had other, you had other, um, like, you know, in the 80s, obviously you had the quarterbacks, right? You had, you had LA, you had um, Marino, um, a little bit later in the 90s too, you had Bledsoe, you had Young, you had a bunch of these guys, right? Now, you know, you come in the, in the early, the late 2000s, early 2000s, and you got all these linebackers. Yeah, you got Tom Brady, and you have Brett Favre uh, towards the end of his career, and a couple other guys like Dante Culpepper and Steve McNair. But bro, Peyton the Manning. Linebackers, the linebackers, that was the core of the NFL. Yeah. Time, bro. Yeah, Bowman, Willis. Uh, There's so many. You crazy. Know, it's, 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 it's endless, bro. Like, you know, Joey Porter, you know, shout out to Joey Porter Jr. Sharing the same colors as his pops. You don't see that often as much anymore. You don't. So it's awesome. It sucks that they wait until the second round to draft them. But it could have been the best city for him to go to. Go there for a real 30 second pick. Well, he, was, he was projected the 15th overall pick. So you talk about 15 picks and in the first round? That's a lot of fucking money. Yeah, that's a different bag. Yeah, but like, it, you saw the video of his dad. His dad was talking to him, said that's his motivation. So, you know, if he if he do his thing, bro, he can come back and double up for even more. He gonna ball out there in Pittsburgh. They, they gonna make him look good. You know, he's got a good sec. He's got a decent secondary that's that's that they're building. You have obviously Minka out there, Minka Cry Baby, Minka Patrick. But he is the dude. He is that dude, though. You know, upset that he forced himself. <laughs> he it's all right. Y'all traded, y'all traded me, cause didn't y'all, y'all traded me today. That's because he wanted out, though. He, wanted out. He, wanted to he didn't want to be Tom Brady on the boat and cost us the first round draft pick. <laughs> Bro, yo, this is crazy. Uh, hey, I tell him, I was like, they're like, oh, you're not mad, Big Philly? And I'm like, no, they're trying to get in the Super Bowl. I'll give up a first round pick any day for a chip. 
any day. Yo. You want to give him $20 Yo. for a chip? Yeah. All day, bro. And you guys as players, you want to want to give it up for a chip, for an opportunity? That's your dream. That's the whole, that's the end game right there for y'all. Yo. As a player, your end game is a Super Bowl. The grandest stage of them all, bro. Yo, that is Fact. Dude, I, I couldn't even imagine just sitting in the stands watching that. What it's like as a player, though, that's a whole different ball game, dude. That's a whole different level of competitiveness, bro. Most definitely. Yeah, you lining up against the best, dog. The like, best of the best. Yeah. It, 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 it's, 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 it's one against one, dog. Like, that's all it is, dog. You there is one against one, bro. We just got to see. We got to see who really that dog. Yeah, we got to see who, they, who, 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 who the one, though. We got to see who the one. Not one person, but we need to see who the one on top. That's, that is. That, hey, I bet there's no greater feeling, though. Well, we had the opportunity to ask that. Uh, so that guy, Dallas, Jack Donovan, uh, he had the opportunity to play in 97 for Green Bay when he went to the Super Bowl with Brett Favre. That was Super Bowl the one. And that was the first question he asked us. He was like, yo. Tell me the experience of playing in the Super Bowl and winning a Super Bowl. He's like, he's like, dude, it happens so fast, it's so good. Yeah. It's like, yo, you think about it, it's like, yo. It's like what Turbo said, boy, you got to do your job out there. That's all they need you to do is do your job. It's hard for some people to do their job in, the, in them high-pressure situations like that. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, like, another guy would love to hear, like, his experience in the Super Bowl. Like, Ray, Ray Lewis, right? He went up against some of the, the, the best teams in the NFC at that time. Yeah. He went up against some, some dogs in the championships, too, the NFC championships. So that's another player I would love to, to hear on his experience as a Baltimore Raider, bro. And him, Ed Reed, and, you know, it's it, just so many, bro. So many, so many great players that went to the Super Bowl, man. Then you get guys like Rex Grossman from the Chicago Bears that can never <laughs> sneak in to a fucking Super Bowl, but whatever. <laughs> I digress. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, did you watch this year's Super Bowl, Kansas City and Philly? Yeah, I was watching with my team out there in uh, Arlington when we was out there in training camp. Uh, how, how, do you, how did you – did it meet your expectations? I mean, it's, it was a good – I mean, it was a great Super Bowl, man. Thirty-eight, thirty-five. I, I was, I was thinking that Philly was gonna do it with Mahomes being hurt a little bit, and the fact that Philly had a, I felt like, yeah, I felt like, yeah, I felt like, I felt like Philly uh, D line was gonna go get Mahomes, but they ain't get him. They they blocked him up, and their defense played well enough. You know, Jalen Hurts and them boys still did their thing, but um, Mahomes, man, Mahomes, man. So, like, when I, when I met Chris Lemons, he was there last year for Super Bowl. It was in the Super Bowl. So, I was like, yo. I was like, I ain't going to lie to you. First thing I told him, I was like, yo, I ain't going to lie to you. I was like, I wrote y'all off at the beginning of the season. I put y'all in fourth place. I said, I still had y'all winning the, going to the playoffs, but I had y'all in fourth place. In the AFC West? All right. Yeah, because bro, I'm thinking of Ross. You know, he got Ross, you know, in Denver. And Denver has some dogs on that defense. And, you know, you got to think about Jerry Judy. You got to respect the man. And and oh, Sutton. And Cortland Sutton, yeah. Cortland Sutton, exactly. So they have dogs there on the offense and defense. The coaching was just horrible. And, and don't get me wrong, Russ wasn't playing like the Russ from, from, from before. You hear what I'm saying? It took him a while to kind of like, you know, start spinning those wheels a bit. And then, you know, Vegas with uh, Devontae, I was like, all right, cool, bet. You know, and then they added Chandler Jones there on the other side with Max Crosby. So you got to respect that 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 front, that front seven. And then you got to look at Los Angeles, right? You got Justin Herbie. You got that defense. They had Khalil Mack on the other side of Bosa. You know, you have Der- Erwin James there, Derwin James in, in the backfield, their safety. So you got to res- – they have a, that, that West is stacked. Now you look at – the West last year, the new West is the East, right? You got obviously Aaron Rodgers coming over, Russell Wilson going over to Denver, right? We added Miami, added some good stuff on defense. Instead of the line, they added it on the secondary with Ramsey, right? You got, yeah, you got the Pats. The Pats didn't really do much, in my opinion. They were, they were rumored to get the uh, D-hop, but never really made the push. So I, I think they're the all-ball out. And you got Buffalo, right? 
the king of the east, because they are the king of the east right now, until somebody dethrones them. And you got Josh Allen. So, yo, Miami needs help. And the AFC East, the AFC East getting it popping. <laughs> they get, they get wild over there in the AFC East, boy. Yo, tell your agent, call the Dolphins, call Chris Greer, and say, yo, Big Philly said that y'all need a linebacker. And I got man, just like that, I'm gonna say Big Philly. I'm gonna say Big Philly. I'm gonna tell him Big Philly said. Hey, and then tell him, tell him, tell him, tell him too. When you go out there and ball, tell him I'm available to be a scout. I, I'm okay. Available. My services are available. Tell him I can teach him how to drive a lineman because he doesn't know. We gonna see. That lineman, that one lineman that y'all did draft got you 18 <laughs> picks, man. <laughs> no, let's be real, like, you do fit. Uh, well, then again, nobody really knows what Vic Fangio is going to do coming into the league this year. He said that he has some good schemes um, and some play styles that he wants to add to his arsenal of different shit that he does. Um, but when you look at his defense, bro, you are his typical linebacker, that Mike linebacker. You fit the mold, and, and, and you can come in there and be an immediate impact. You know, we drafted Channing Tindall last year, but there's been some um, stuff that came out that he can't grasp the playbook. Now we're going to see if he can, because it's a new playbook, right? Um, then, you know, we brought, in, we brought in Buddy from Tennessee, Long. But the way he's looking... <laughs> <laughs> I still think that Jerome is the best linebacker on the roster. He's the best linebacker on the roster. He's the best linebacker to play sideline to sideline. But he's not going to stuff the gap like you want him to as a middle linebacker. He don't have that ability. Sorry. He's not big enough for it. But he's athletic enough to go sideline to sideline. See what I'm saying? So, it's one of those things, man, where we need a linebacker. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, hey man, hey man, y'all boys, y'all boys, I ain't saying that, man. Y'all boys doing all the talking, man. I ain't saying that, man. I just, I just, I just know God's the greatest, man. All you gotta do is smile and wave. Where's the little penguins from Madagascar? Smile and wave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, hold on. I put, let me pull it up right there, because I, I actually put a nice comment, and I actually put some of your PFF statistics. Uh, so PFF ranked. Uh, XFL Guardians linebacker overall grade eighty four point three um, on four hundred and twenty two snaps on the defense. So when you were putting that work in four hundred and twenty two <laughs> snaps, your rank was eighty four point three, which is a really good rank. Uh, first ranked first. You hear that, Chris Greer? Ranked first among linebackers in overall grades and rushing defense. At 90.1 PFF. That's a dog, man. That's a dog. I, if I haven't heard one, <laughs> I, 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 I haven't seen one. If I haven't heard one, it's right there. That's a dog, bro. That's a big dog. Like, that's, a, that's a dog, right? I, that's what I think so. Last time I checked, right? I don't know if that's right. I'm really, I'm really pissed off. I'm really pissed off about it, bro. My last game. If I would have just, I just probably just made one pass break up and done something better, man. I would have had a, I would have had a more flawless year. I still see the flaws in my game, but that's what we got the off season for to put the work in, dog. But I appreciate y'all work because even though that's good, I know I can be even better. You know, I, 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 you know, I just do the work. I'm a vessel. God just handle the rest, but I know I can beat up, bro. You know that you haven't hit the ceiling yet, and that's a most definitely. Thing. ceiling that you gotta break right. through and you haven't done it yet but you will and imagine these stats and you still haven't broken yet so yeah. there's potential yeah there's you no know, growth you know another, another thing too but i realize is like you know you put you putting up these type of numbers against guys that's hungry because you know we could say the nfl you know you got the top of the top of the top guys but obviously you feel me yeah, but man, you got hungry. You got you got guys in the XFL that's trying to go back or that's trying to get there for the first time. But these dudes hungry, bro. 
school. Bro, you would be playing that they ain't dog against guys like that, bro. You feel me? NFL people got real turbo. Right? You have you do have dogs, right? They might yeah, overplay, so like, but you got dogs. It's tough but to live. you got players that know they made it. They know they got that contract, yeah, and they chilling. Yeah. They chilling. They ain't taking it serious. They ain't taking it serious. You can tell they don't take it serious based off of life events, right? Based off of life events, they ain't securing that bag. They're not protecting their source of income. You know how many guys I know. Being in my line of work, I met a guy the other day. I ain't gonna say his name, but he played for the Baltimore Ravens 15 years. Played for his Ravens 15 years. And this dude was telling me, he's like, yo, bro, I'm out here. He was opening up something else. He's like, yo, bro, I'm trying to make what I was making in the league. Because I didn't set myself up. He left broke. So it's like, yo, there's, there's different mindsets as being a dog. But you didn't secure the bag. Same thing, yeah. Same thing as a Zuko player. Like, you're a Zuko player. You plan against other guys. You're in practice against guys that's trying to get, not even a D1. Let's, 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 let's just throw a D1 out the way. They're not even trying to get a D1 scholarship. They're just trying to get anybody to take the league. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a, I feel like it's the same thing in the XFL. you just trying to get guys to just, you just trying to get, like, the coaches to see, like, okay, cool, bro. Like, yeah. You know, I, I was in the league, you feel me, and shit like that. I was young and all stuff, but like, now we all we all trying to get back. You feel me? Everybody, everybody looked at us. You basically said, okay, cool, like, you know, we don't want you. You know, we're going to move on. That's basically, I feel like that's everybody's mindset in the XFL, or any, even in the USFL. You know, like, I, I got to show these dudes, like, yo, you wrong. You feel me? You wrong about me. You feel me? So that, that's, I feel like that's everybody's mindset. In that league, bro. So, like, for everybody, for you to be doing all that, 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 and just not take it like that, bro. Don't love, bro. Don't love. You know, it be it, it mean a lot to me. Like, you know, because this is a child game that we playing, but we get the blessed to be playing at this professional level. You feel me? But it was it was the fact that you know I went three years without playing it. You feel me? That 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 really that really put a hunger in me. And I knew, and that's when I first learned that it might not be there. You know what I'm saying? Like what Philly was talking about, bro, it, you got to set yourself up for when it's not. So I was already setting myself up for if it was not, but, but preparing like it was going to be, you know what I mean? So it's a tough spot to be in for some time, but it paid off, bro. It paid off. Yeah, but we had a, we had a guy on here um, at the beginning of the month of April. Uh, Kayvon, right? Kayvon Davis. Yeah. Kayvon Davis. He was the last chance you played for Arkansas State. Um, he, uh, had some injuries, had to take a step back for a year because of COVID, a little heart condition, came back, played for HBCU, did his thing out there at an HBCU level, went into the draft process, uh, didn't mention the heart condition from COVID that he wasn't even experiencing symptoms from before. Yeah. He drafted, nobody gave him the opportunity, went to the, uh, arena. He got another concussion and he's out. Man. He had to retire. Six concussions. Had to retire. So Man, you it's see tough. Like that, bro, it's like, damn, dude, because he fought so hard to keep that dream alive, right? Keep that journey going. But look, as I, like I told him, as one door closes, another opens. And now, yeah, maybe it wasn't your path to play the game, but it's your path now to inspire the next generation of young men to play the game. And now he had co your coach out in Texas. So oh, that's amazing. Okay. Yeah, bro, you know, yeah, he might not made it like that, but he gonna make it some other way. And maybe it's not as a player, but maybe it'll be as a coach. Most definitely, most definitely. So that's you gotta find point. your spot, man. You gotta find your spot, man. Yeah, bro, you gotta find it, bro. And, and, and that's where everybody, uh, you, you still have this, this wonderful opportunity to continue to play. You you went through a whole year, no injury, knock on wood, you know, keep that going. Healthy, you left out of there, healthy out of the XFL. You made your little bread to help your family, right? Now, you got to wait for that invite. It's coming. Somebody going to be the linebacker in camp. There's 72 players in camp on each team. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You, you gonna be I, I know for a fact just based off of your numbers, you're gonna be ready. Yeah, stay ready so you ain't gotta get ready, man. 
Yo, he gonna, he gonna be a part of the 53, bro. I'm telling you, yo, let me tell you something. He gonna, yo, he gonna be a part of a 53 out of that 32 team. He gonna be a part of 53, bro. Chris Greer gonna call him, right? He gonna be like, yo. We just do the word, to, we just do the word, Turbo. That's it. If it happened, it happened. We just do the word. Right, right, right. He gonna call Terrence, right? He gonna be like, yo, you ready, Terrence? He gonna be like, bro, I've been ready. Yo, yo, yeah, right? man, just send me the, just send the flight, man, or send me the gas, man, bro. We're right out of street. Hey, I'm already look, bro. I already have my bags packed. I already bought the tickets to Miami because Big Philly right. told me. Big Philly, Big Philly knew best, bro. Big Philly knew best. Yeah, yeah Big Philly told me. I gotta tell that boy, Big he Philly. Hit me. This crib. <laughs> he about to this crib for some tacos. I don't know if this white dude can make tacos, but shit, he invited me to some tacos. So I'm already on my way down to. Just bring, just send me the playbook. Just send me the playbook. Click. That's it. It's done. That's it's it. Because, bro, like, come on, bro. It's not that hard, bro. Like, yo, it's going to be, I'm telling you. But Buffalo, I, if Amicus is watching, I'm pretty sure he'll be watching soon enough, but he'll rewatch it. He's salivating. Because when I told him that, because, again, you know, they lost Terrell Evans, bro. So they lost a big, line, a big piece of that defense. They need a linebacker, too. That's another team. I'm dreading it. Because then I'm going to be like, damn, bro. I like Terrence, bro. But then when he plays the Dolphins, I'll be like, ah. Yeah, yeah, bro. You're going to be, you gonna be wishing it. You're going to be, gonna be wishing ill on me, bro. I'm going to remember that. Every time I, every time I do something, I got to shout out Philly, man. Cedric Wilson. Damn, bro. What's that running back? Oh, no, no. You're talking about oh, running back? No, my no, no, right no, back. Ray Mostert. Damn, bro. What is going on? Bro, you got to catch him. That's the shit, bro. Yeah, them boys be moving out there, man. Them boys be moving out there. So, let me ask you a question. How do you, in your game, how do you approach an elusive running back like that and, like, and most of So, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know if you know. Well, I'm pretty sure you do know. But, like, so Miami now, I call them the Zoom team, the Zoomies, right? Because they got, they got, you know, obviously you got Tyree. You got Jay, right? They just brought in Braxton Berrios, who bought, but what is it, but 4 3? What is it, 4 3 40? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That white boy coming to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, he's fast, bro. He fast. He's fast. He fast, right? You got all three of them boys. Then you got the running backs. You got Raheem Mostert, fast ass running back. And then they bring in A Train out of Texas AM in the fourth round. And he runs. A four three four two three run four two four two nine four three around there four two eight something like that. How how do you approach? How do you game plan around running backs like that? Get downhill. Just explode off that. You game. gotta get you gotta get to them boy before they get rolling. Ain't you gotta think about it. Foot like linebackers like everybody get so caught up in the forties and that's because if you're a coverage linebacker I I think you should get caught up in a little bit of the forty because you got to cover maybe a maybe a, the fourth best wide receiver or the tight end you know what I mean but for the most part we we five yards away from the line of scrimmage so it's about how quick we can get downhill without getting touched by the lineman because the running back they still got to read the hole if they hit it hard if they see the hole they gonna hit it hard but if they don't see it. Because of the fact that you done, you done, you done, your D lineman either held his gap and put himself in that hole, or you done got in that hole quick. You know what I'm saying? That make that make you tiptoe because you like, dang, I can't hit this hole like I want to. That boy sitting right there. So like, when you play against backs as fast, you gotta be, you gotta get to the point with them quick. Because if you don't, and you let them boys get rolling, that boy gonna hit his head on the goalpost. You feel me? You too fast, nah. I ain't got nothing for you now. You gotta get to them before they get you, you feel me? And that's the crazy thing. Like, when you see a lot of these new linebackers that come out in the league, bro, they're like, yo, these, these linebackers are running like 4-5, 4-4. Bro, 4-5. Bro, they're running 4-3s and 4-4s, bro. Like, 4-3s and 4-4s. Bro, bro. Like, Jeff bro, Campbell. Bro, what's his name? What's his name? Um, from the Dallas, bro. Oh, Michael Par- uh, Parsons. Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons. Michael Parsons. 4-3. For his size too, bro. bro he's still talking about like six three, but two forty eight. Now, what about that D lineman from Georgia, man? That D tackle that ran that four five. Four five? No, I think he was like he was like maybe like six seven. No, he, he ran a four. He ran a four seven. Size. Yeah, four seven. Four seven. Still crazy. But, if, but 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 think about it like this: you ever see that man running forty yards down the field, boy? That's not a good thing, boy. Let me tell you that. 
that means you feel me? That mean that mean that mean that that, that mean he chasing something. You know what I mean? Unless you unless you cribbing something. But but no, nah, them boys is freak athletes though, Mark. That's that's the thing about the NFL. It's 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 the most talented, but also the most the most freakish athletes in the NFL. NBA got them too, but they just not as big and powerful, I believe, on the on the whole entire level. Yeah, they lengthy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, your lower body, yeah. Like me and Turbo were talking about this once, right? I don't know. Wasn't you? Or, I was about to be somebody else. I was like, bro, oh, somebody else, right? So I was talking about Messi, Leo Messi. Because we're following soccer. We're following soccer. <laughs> Obviously, he just left PC, uh, PSG, right? Mm-hmm. No, he didn't leave. He already announced it. He left and he even apologized to his teammates and everything. He's done. And Julie's done. Yeah, he's going to Saudi Arabia or something like that. Well, Saudi Arabia offered him a fat ass contract. But there's a lot of rumors that he's going to go back to Barcelona. Or another rumor, because he's part owner of the of Inter Miami, he's gonna come down to Inter Miami play MLS. Oh man, the city gonna be lit, man. Miami gonna be through the roof, man. Messi come out there. You already, already know it, which which will boom the soccer, the or, well, real football, uh, will boom their sport here in South Florida, and I think will probably propel it to be the number one sport uh, in in a couple of years, especially with Leo Messi here. But I was telling you, I was talking to a client, and I was like. If you really think about it, some of these guys that are in the NFL now, guys like Tyreek, uh, those those speedy guys, these line, these line, uh, these running backs, guys like Carson, bro, if you put them in soccer, running those four threes like that, I don't know. I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah Tyreek with a through ball might be over with. He just got to know. He just got to have enough touch to put it in the hole. He's so fast. Outsides only happen if you pass the line. Yeah, when you when you pass the line before the ball is passed. So if they pass that ball, he can if you're if that guy can determine that you're gonna bump, you're gonna that you're gonna explode out there. Yeah, he just he, just imagine that turbo like Tyreek. Tyreek got a dude five yards ahead of him and the ball on the left side, and all of a sudden he just take off and the, and the guy on the left side know he taking off. He just gonna I'm telling you, you feel me? He gonna kick it a little early. You know Tyreek. You know Tyreek gonna but he gonna blaze past him. Dude, you right, you five yards in front of Tyreek. All right, I'm good. I got five yards in front of him. I'm staying ahead of pace, right? That ball gone. You don't know the ball gone yet. You turning your head around. You see him. You turn your head and look at the ball. You turn back around. He in front of you already. Yeah. He gone. That boy gone. Know it. Yeah, that's yeah, a fact. This speed is ridiculous, bro. Doug, what, what you running, man? Man, I ran. I mean, I ran about a four seven, four six. Man, that's where I'm at right there. Four eight now. Yeah, bro. I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm more, I'm more quick. I'm more quick. I'm more quick. I'm, I'm a quicker player than fast player. Like, like I'm saying, if I'm running forty yards, bro, ain't that good going on. I'm trying to get to you before I can get there. So I move. I move. I, I, I read the game well. So that's how I make up for that. Some players are quick and some players are fast, right? So it depends yeah. on how you play your game. And if you play your game around your 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 skill set, it'll mask the fact that you're not fast. You're just quick. You get what I'm saying? Especially if you're and, and again, your, your numbers don't lie. You feel me? Yeah. 80th percentile of a, a grade in BFF against the run tells me that you're quicker hitting the hole, going like you just said, getting downhill, determining what they're gonna do. And play recognition with when it's specifically the run game. That's that IQ for the run game. Now maybe in the pass game might be a little bit more difficult in today's game because obviously you know you got a lot of even these tight ends are are very fucking fast as shit. They're like Kyle Pitts, but nonetheless you can mask it in in zone coverage. So you know what I'm saying because you don't need to keep up like that. So you know finding a team 
that plays a lot more zone over man to man, uh, where or and, and prioritizes and, and run defense would be probably the best fit for you in your current skill set. You get what I'm saying? Uh, which Miami does play a lot of man to man on the linebackers, unless you're covering like a, a, a running back coming out of the flat or something like that, or if you're coming in on a tight end. But you usually have help over the top with the safety because usually you have um, um, Howard back there, or not Howard, Howard. 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 Holland back there, and now you know I don't, I don't know what they're gonna do at the, at the safety spot, whether it's gonna be Brandon Bell or not. But you have Brandon Bell back there too, so it depends on how big Bangio wants to run it. But you have that that style where Miami does prioritize and contain and run. Miami last year against the running backs, they only gave up like sixty yards a game against running backs. But what was fucking us up was these fucking quarterbacks. All right, all these damn fast ass quarterbacks, Patrick Mahomes. Well, not Patty, because Pat, we didn't play Patty last year. But, like, Lamar, Lamar Torch. Yeah, Lamar, right? Lamar, kill him, man. Lamar Torch, our ass, bro. Yeah, man. Goat. Goat Jackson. Yeah, Goat Jackson. I like hey, it. The Goat still lost. Two <laughs> yeah, it, it, it had a great. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. Remember that was, that was like 12 years ago. Right, Yo, man. Lamar wasn't even drafted yet when that happened. Put it that way. That's how long ago that was. This was recent. This was last year. We put that ass with you. Two years ago, we put that ass with it on your ass. Two years. And now we're going to go to Baltimore again and whip that ass next year. We're talking to them. <laughs> <laughs> this is, hey, but you know what? When the camera's off, this is how we are. <laughs> all day, dude. That's all I talk shit all day like that. But it's fun, bro. Like, he's like my little brother. I look at him like my little brother, bro. I love this kid to death, but he's always at my crib. We always go and catch up and everything, you know. So he's, you know, that's how we connected growing up. You know? Yeah, for sure, through football. That's how we I used to whoop yeah, his ass in Madden, and now he whoops <laughs> my ass in Madden. Really? <laughs> it really come full circle, 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 ain't it? How you going? How you going to take props with somebody at that time? I ain't know how to play no Madden, bro. I ain't never played. I ain't gonna lie, he's greedy, bro. Like 60 to nothing, bro. Like, <laughs> nah, tell, him, tell, him, tell him to do that again. That tell boy don't be greedy, you know, man. That boy got right. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Turbo be spanking my ass, boy, man. Now, now dude, it, hey, as you get older, you feel, you realize something. Damn, bro. You can't play this shit no more like you used to. Game changing, the game changing. You gotta adapt with the game, my boy. It's gonna be bad. Right? I'm like, yo. I'll be, be throwing the ball and I'll be like, bro, this shit worked the last game. Now it's not working. It worked in 2021. It ain't working in 2022. Nah, but shit. again, it's like the NFL. The game forever changes, dog. See, that, that thing was the slants, right? The slant patterns. Bro, you throw a slant, you kick your right, you kick your tight end, right? You out ride him for a streak, and you roll out with the pocket, and you would hit, like, it's usually X or B. You would hit B at the end, and dude, you'll, you'll break open all the way down. Now, boy, that linebacker on his ass, boy, you know. <laughs> pick. I'd be like, damn, I should have saw that damn linebacker. I should have seen him. You should have saw him. You got to read it. Get your Brady on. I said, I'd be fucking, I'd be sitting there, I'd be like, damn, that was Terrence, you were 10 feet out. God damn. I'd be like, damn. I got a quick question for you, though. Like, who do you, like, do you, do you look after anybody, like, in the NFL right now? Or, like, that retired? Well, let's just, let's just, let's just do the, the that's, Active right now. Do you do you like compare your game to anybody? Do you watch anybody that you think that you try to replicate? Right, 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 right. I watch. I watch everybody, bro, because I just love football and I want to know who really is. You know, a lot of times it could be media saying who the best linebackers is, but if you really watch the game and watch it how I do, I love watching. I got fantasy football during the off season. Um, I got you know red zone. You know, hey. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? So I'm watching. Fantasy. All right, all right. But, um, a cat. For sure, for sure. But a cat I really like. <laughs> I feel you, bro. Let me show you right quick. Let me show you what we play for. Hold up. You know what I'm thinking? I'm playing. Oh, they got a little bar. Did you talk about baseball? The little bar is Cafecito. Okay. Uh, Our right, boy yeah, plays with a belt. Yeah. Okay. yeah. There you go. There you go. Got a, I won last year. 
last year. They tried to steal. They tried to steal it from me. They tried to steal it from me. They know some bullshit because I, I heard that somebody went out and they, the dude lost. And now they're like, oh no, you know it's not fair. I should have won. It's all right though. It's mine. I see you. I see you got the Aaron Rodgers belt. You feel me? Yo, put it around, man. <laughs> Discount Belichick. <laughs> Discount Belichick, man. For sure. But yeah, my favorite. But my favorite linebacker. But my favorite linebacker is like Devin White. Um, I love Roquan. Um, um, Nick Bolton from the Chiefs is amazing. I, I, I kind of like his game. I kind of bold my game a little bit. I'm older than Nick Bowen, but you know, just watching them, I learned a lot from these linebackers. Like you learn a lot from um, Fred, Fred Warner, and Bobby Wagner, and Eric Kendrick. Like them boys, them boys really. My my top five inside linebackers right now. I probably go Fred one, Roquan, Roquan two. Kendrick's three. Um, Devin Foe. Yeah, um, from the Jaguars, Foe Lucon. Foe Lucon, number 23. Go watch his tape. He had 188 tackles this year. He amazing. He probably number five. And then I probably got him and Boatman, like, right there, because they kind of like the same, same player. Same player. They're my top five. Yeah, man. You... And I'm missing, and I ain't even say Bobby either. Bobby, like, Bobby always good. It's kind of, Bobby, like, got that LeBron James factor. Like, he's so good every year that, you know, you kind of just expect that people forget about it because in this NFL, you know, it's all about the new player. But them, them some of the best linebackers I like. They don't like, old, they don't like older players. That's the issue. Like, even fan bases, unless you were, like, originally drafted and you had that whole, you know, I've been a Seahawk or I've been a Dolphin forever, you know, even the fan bases, like, Bro, like they were, they out here they complain about you know the old man complaining or you know uh, or uh, Edmonds wanting you know what he deserved uh, and they were like all right cool let him go and he's gonna go to Chicago he's gonna make that bread which I thought was stupid because you ended up paying him when you had Roquan there you should have paid Roquan but whatever that ain't my fault but yeah yeah <laughs> but he wanted out I think he wanted out of uh, Chicago but. Uh, you know, because Chicago was, was going through it. You know, but, you know, uh, Fields turned it around out there. And, you know, they look a lot better. And now with the addition of D.J. Moore to that wide receiver core, and you have Chase Claypool, and you have, uh, what's the other cat out there? Uh, Moore. Moore? Is it Moore? Mooney. 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 Um, you know, they look a lot better. And then they added Miles Sanders out there. Or, no, Miles Sanders went to uh, Carolina. Did he go to Carolina? Oh, yeah, he went to Carolina. And, yeah, Carolina. And, also, and then they, uh, they lost Montgomery. Montgomery went to uh, uh, Detroit. And they just moved. Yeah, that's a nice little pickup. Yeah, D -Sw where did he switch to? Philly. Uh, Philly. 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 Bro, they just got a fucking running back, bro. God damn. Yo, Philly's looks nasty, bro. They got that center. Full of Georgia Bulldogs, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> The Kobe Dean, the Kobe Dean should be starting this year. Hell yeah, bro! He should start last year. What? Who they had? I forgot the name of uh buddy that had a fun of him, bro. Kazir White. Nah, nah. Or or Edwards. Yeah, 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 Edwards, bro. I feel like he should have started over there. It was nice. It was it was nice. You know, he probably a little bit smarter than the Kobe right now with him being a rookie last year. But at the same time, I'm I'm sure the Kobe gonna be in there soon, bro. He a dog. He ain't big, but he can fly. That's the thing, you know. So it's it's interesting how the game is going, how it's evolving. You know, yeah, you know, it is a young man's game, unfortunately. So you know, I think that's why they disrespect Bobby so much. But Bobby, that dude, bro, and now he back at home. He back in Seattle. Where he belongs, where he should never left to begin with. They tried his ass to send him over there to fucking LA, but um, you know he's back where he belongs. Um, so you know, obviously, draft is post draft is done. Um, season's season's gonna start kicking into uh, training camp in July. 
uh, obviously while we're still waiting for camp. But um, as a fan, right, just fantasy guy, you know what I'm saying? Um, what's your bold early prediction? Who you got winning the Super Bowl? The Super Bowl? <laughs> this right now, what's going on? Who you got? Which, and don't think, hey, trust me, I, I ain't one of those that the Dolphins are going to go undefeated. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. Uh, we'll be lucky to make the playoffs, but uh, I'm just curious to see what you think. Um, who can win a Super Bowl, man? That's always tough because, you know, everybody look good. Everybody, one team can look good at the beginning of the season and then, or on paper look good, and then they be trash when they come to the real game. You know what? I'm going to say – I'm going to go with Jacksonville. And the reason why I'm going to go with Jacksonville, I'm from Jacksonville, but I'm going to go with Jacksonville because we made some um, – we did lose Cam Robinson. But Trevor Trevor made a big jump last year, and I think with the the guys he got around this year, with the addition to Calvin Ridley, you know what I mean, ETN, a young running back, you know what I mean? And we got a young we got a young running back. We got a good tight end in the draft. Good defense. You know what I mean? That's a that's a dark horse. I'm gonna go dark horse Jacksonville, man. I definitely got him winning the AFC South though. That's what I'm saying, yeah. You got you guys will definitely come out south. Um, but we'll see what Anthony Richardson and what he's about uh, with uh Indy. I don't think they're gonna sit him for too long. Although I thought he was Although he's the most athletic quarterback coming out of the draft, I didn't feel he was NFL ready just yet. I thought he should have sat. I would have loved to see him in Seattle behind uh, Gino for like two years and then uh, transition to like a guy like Richardson. Uh, but, um, you know, I kind of want to see what they do with Indy. I didn't think they did enough uh, in the wide receiving room. I think that that's probably their weakest part, uh, link right now. But obviously, you know, you got to respect their run game with Jonathan Taylor. Uh, and they're going to try to prioritize that uh, this year as well. And their defense is, is, is still really good defense. So um, I think that would be your biggest challenge. And then you got to think about Houston. Houston just got a whole lot better uh, just in the draft alone, not including the acquisitions that they made in the offseason. They might have lost Brandon uh, Cooks, but they gained some decent guys out there. I mean, obviously, now they got their franchise quarterback. And they added their their staple uh, edge rusher uh, in this year's draft too, and Anderson. That was they drafted Anderson, mm-hmm. so they got two key players this year. Um, so it, it's the the South definitely looks a lot better than last season. And the Most definitely competitive, which you guys as fans uh, for those teams in the South, you know, it makes it more it makes it funner for your fan base. You know, when you go out to the games, the games are more lit. It's a lot louder. It ain't nothing like walking into a stadium, and it's one of those rivalry games, bro. Like, the Jets really, bro, the last couple of years, they fell off with Miami. So, but, like, bro, Buffalo's in town. Yeah, that so, Buffalo, when Buffalo and Miami play, it'd be lit. That, 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 that first Buffalo game, them boys were passing out out there. So hot out there in Miami, boy. Uh uh-uh, uh man, uh uh-uh. uh that, that heat got up on me. Everybody was catching full body cramp. Dude, dude, there were people even complaining. It was the funniest shit. They were like, yo, the Dolphins cheated. I'm like, okay, how? Oh, the way they designed their stadium, they cheated because they make it too hot for the other team. <laughs> yeah, on the opposing side that that sun be hitting them. <laughs> no, you see the elements. I said so so and this was a Buffalo Bills fan. So I go, all right, so then we all cheat. They go, how? Because y'all, it's cold as shit up there in the summer and the winter, and we down here in the heat, and we got to go up there and it's cold as shit. Yeah, that's we true. Too. Yeah. You guys use the elements of your advantage. Geographical it advantage. Stop. It didn't stop the Buffalo Bills fans from throwing snowballs. I know, CC. Uh, we know it's low as shit. Well, if it's low, get some headsets. I don't tell you, because that's, that's how it's going to go. But, they say um, it's low. They say my voice yeah, low. For me, for me. Yeah, they say we can't. Uh, CT's, uh, CT runs the Dolphins content uh, for uh, the platform on Mondays uh, with Lizzie. They have their own show, uh, and but they stream it both on my platform here 
at uh, Miami Fan Talk Network and on their platform. Uh, they cover the Dolphins stuff, and CT runs the uh, the Dolphins representation for Warzone. So, which will come. Sure. But you know, we build it. Hey, bro, if you know some Jag fans, some real Jag fans, or shit, you a Jag fan? If you well, we'll wait until. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just asking my city, man. Yeah, I'm just a football fan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, exactly. We are gonna wait, but if you know some Jack fans that want to come on and spit on that war zone with us, hey, or even if you want to rep your Jags because that's your home team, hey, I'll be more than happy to have you on here. As much. Oh, I think, I think, I think I know a couple Jack fans I can throw you away, man. Yeah, uh, dude. Yeah, I'm looking for everybody that he. Hey, bro, hey, let me tell you something. That, that, those XFL fans, bro, they get crazy. They get, I see yeah, some man. videos. They be getting lit, bro, like it's the NFL. It's getting there. And watch, as it as it continues to grow, I, especially when they start adding teams, because I, you know, I don't think they do it justice having just eight teams, bro. And, you know, actually, since we're talking about the XFL, tell me some of the challenges you face. Because you guys all train in one hub, right, in Texas. Yeah. And you guys travel to the destinations on where the games are, right? And you obviously live in Jacksonville, and you play for Orlando, and yet you lived in Texas. So, like, tell me how that dynamic works. Because it's definitely definitely a lot different than what we're traditionally used to. Yeah, man. So we all be in Texas. Every team is in Texas and Arlington. And we all got our own hotels and everything like that. Except for uh, Houston and um, Dallas, they had the same hotel. They had a real big hotel and they shared the same facility. And what we did was everybody had different practice schedule times and they had buses. So we would drive to practice and everything. And we stayed at the hotel during the season, those of us who chose to. And then we would, when we had games, we we you know, we're all flying on the same team, both teams, one team in the front, one team in the back. And we'll fly to our destination, play, and then leave that same night and then be back in Texas. So it was a pretty good process, man. You know, it went by pretty fast. I was there in January, and now I'm home now um, from the from the um, season because we didn't make the playoffs, of course. But, um, you know, uh, I don't know, boy. We got aliens coming through here. Say, bro, that shit, dude. That yo, I even felt the air coming through. I was like, what the? <laughs> yo, yeah, man. And some, and some ghosts, man. That's some supernatural right there. <laughs> but yeah, it was cool. You know, um, you know, if the NFL don't work out or nothing like that, you know, I would love to come back to the SFL. You know what I mean? It was a great league, dog. Like, I just want to play football, man. That's it. And I'm blessed to be able to do it. So whoever calls. For sure. Tell, tell, tell Buckley I will be there soon, man. Tell that boy Buckley. Right, I got you, man. Holla at T Buck, man. My boy Turbo say he ready. All right. I'm gonna do. I'm, hey. I'm gonna do a quick stop out of arena, and I'm gonna be there soon, man. So. Hey, what team you play for in arena, Turbo? Huh? Hey, what team you play for in arena? I don't play. I don't play in arena. I'm trying to. I'm trying to get that spot. You trying to get that child? Okay, okay. okay. Orlando, for Orlando Predators. For the Predators. Yeah, yeah. So. For somebody like Turbo, right? Uh, Turbo with the unconventional route to, uh, to, to, to proceed in his professional uh, football career. How do you go about getting an invitation to try out uh, for the XFL? Like, well, so for guys well, like Turbo, um, who maybe are in, um, you know, Juco or who are in, um, the NCCAA, where you know, obviously the big boys are, Warren University and all that. Um, or the is it NIA? What is it called? And NAIA. How do you guys? Uh, what do you? What is your advice to those athletes to try to get a tryout in the XFL level? Well, you know, first get to schooling. Well, first get to schooling. You know, what I'm saying, take care of all your years you can play college football because you're gonna need to film. And then once you get to film. Then you got to start hitting these showcases that they're going to be having during the summertime. I think they might be having them. They're going to start, you know, start having some uh, like little clinics and stuff like that. You need to show up to those and go perform. So be in shape. And then from there, you know what I mean? Just try to try your best to uh, reach out to all the teams, show them your film, 
everything like that. Because if you got college, what you need is film. If you ain't got film, then nobody gonna take it. They ain't gonna take it off like no word of mouth. Like, oh, I can play. Okay, I'll let you in. But if you show that you played it in college, and that's to show you got some, you know, some real good film, then they'd be willing to talk to you. you know, they just want because if you if you, if you if you look good on film, they're willing to give you a chance. Hopefully, I'm not saying that's for everybody, but you know, the more the more you can do for yourself, the better. And just make sure you're in shape. And then Turbo, like doing arena, we partner with the Arena Football League, the XFL is, um, and, and stuff like that. So if you ball out there, you know, you never know who watching from the XFL might want to give you a call up for the next season. So that'd be my advice. And never quit, you know what I mean? If you feel it in your heart and you putting that work in, everybody knows you're putting that dog food in. You just can't just say like, oh, I'm putting that work in. No, bro, you know you're putting that work in. If you're doing that, then I, I say chase it full hearted. For sure, for sure. You got it, though. Put the work in. I'm telling you, it'd it be crazy how I end up. For sure, bro. Control control your narrative, you feel me? And how you control it by what you put in, you know what I mean? Right. If you can control it, then you're gonna be you're gonna be A1. Yeah. What we need, what we need to get this dude is maybe a couple of tackles. You know what the dolphins can do is get a Liam Eichenberg because he need to work on technique because the dude ain't got no technique. Like <laughs> get him to go, go against him for a bit to get his skills up. Cause that's the thing, you know, he needs somebody to spar with to actually you know, work on his technique and his development, especially coming off the edge, if he wants to continue being an edge rusher uh, or if he wants to, uh, uh, you know, focus on that middle linebacking uh, group and learning, like you were mentioning, you know, learning, getting comfortable with keys. So sitting back and actually, you know, studying some film and learning some of those keys and, and understanding uh, play recognition and instinct because a lot of it, what you is instinct too. You know, just, yeah, for sure. You know, situational football. You can smell what the play is. Exactly. You know, like if it's a second and one, you know, they might hit you with a play action or, or a run up the, you know, run up the gut. You know what I'm saying? Like something like that where, you know, you're going to stuff it, uh, stuffing that one, you know, one of those little lanes or the B gap or whatever it is that you're going to, you know, whatever you feel like is going to happen. So, you know, him getting comfortable and, act, and uh, acclimating to it, that's going to be key because you're going from edge rushing to middle linebacker. Those are two different fucking positions when you really like edge rushing. Two different Most definitely. abilities. Yeah, yeah, bro. I tell you what, edge rushing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you gotta go through B. <laughs> call the play, bro. You feel me? I know where I'm gonna go, bro. You feel me? You got A, you got B, bro. That's it, bro. Contain, yeah, conceal the edge, and that's it. You that's it, bro. Seal the edge, contain it, and that's it. Hit the gap. Try to get to that quarterback. Right. I think, I honestly, that's probably the most fun position to play on. I think, I think it is. Like you just, oh, dude, you got one responsibility. Yeah, but hit like, the quarterback. Right. That's it. I'm, I'm going to run out that way. <laughs> Smack his what, hey, what, all right. Smack what's, 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 what's a better feeling? What's a better feeling? Hit the quarterback or getting a pick? Pick. <laughs> Like, bro, like, like, pit. Getting a pit, bro, like, you need tripping, though. Because it's so, because, like, you know, hitting the quarterback be cool, but, like, getting a pick, you know, you got that guarantee to turn over and, 
It's something about it's something about when a quarterback throws the ball, you take it out of the air and go the opposite way. It's just something about it. Yeah, I wish I wish I had the video, man. Uh, and you lay you lay the fucking haymakers, bro. Yeah, bro. I, and he actually he just dropped it today, but I actually shared it. Uh, he said I have it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he laid a fucking kaboom on this boy, bro. Oh, that was that little tackle he hit, that little one on tackle. Yeah, he's like a fuck boy, bro. He did it quick. Was it the first one? I see it like a play off here. Uh, I don't know if you guys can see it, but oh, there it goes. Let's see if he'll fumble. There it goes. Well, bam! Nice <laughs> first fumble. Nice yeah, man. First fumble, y'all. Boy. That's my song on there too. I made that. I made the song for the highlight tape too, man. Y'all go ahead and check it out, man. Dude, I love it. Hold on, that, that, that's, that's you. you. Yeah, that's me. 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 Yeah, you should have said that. I would have played it. My well, bad, bro. I wasn't thinking about it. You know, you know. Give me the intro. Listen to it. It's called Comeback Season. I, I ain't drop it yet. I just dropped it on the highlight tape. I'll drop it soon on my little mix tape that I'm dropping. Turbo. We need a little All right. We, 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 we'll talk we'll talk about it, man. We'll talk about it later, man. Yeah. Give me that little hug. Yeah. That's it. Kaboom. Yeah, I, you know we drop y'all boys a nice little nice little intro <laughs> intro song out, man. You know what I'm saying? But hey man, it's ten o'clock. I want to thank you for coming on. <laughs> I hope you all had a great time. Look, look, now it's ten o'clock. And look who drops, boy, Amicus, bro. You wait too long to come on this thing, man. You had a potential Buffalo Bills on here. Because <laughs> I think he's going to be a Dolphin. That's what I'm hoping. I hope he's going to be a Dolphin. But, hey, man, um, I hope you all enjoyed the show, man. Don't forget, like and subscribe. We got a lot of stuff going on on this platform. Miami Dolphins content. If you haven't checked them out yet, all my Dolphins fans, go check them out. Bleezy and CT. CT, a funny dude. Talk a lot. <laughs> we get real passionate. Uh, Amicus, uh, when they start their show, I know that their platform's already up and running. They turned it on live yet. But the Buff Bills Mafia, sit down. If y'all haven't yet, make sure y'all subscribe to them too. And hit that notification. And just hit the subscribe for Miami Fan Talk. First jersey, Nick Needham, 200 subscribers, guys. I am, I think... 20, no, not even, actually less now. I'm like 14 subscribers away to giving away that first jersey, man. Right there, right there. Let's get it tonight, if possible, ladies and gentlemen. Terry, it was a pleasure, dog. It was a pleasure, y'all, you know, boy. Back on, bro. Hey, For sure. If you get picked up, not if, when, when you get picked up, because you got to respect the numbers. When you get picked up, you come back on the show. For sure, man. Big foes. I got you, my big friend. Big foes. You Yo, big foes, man. Going. Big foes. Hey, but when you get, if you come to Miami, we're doing the show live. And I'm cooking. All right. Say the more, boy. I can eat, boy. He can tell you. I'll be throwing it Boy, throw down, turbo. <laughs> For hey, sure. Some brisket. I'll make you some brisket tacos, bro. I'll be there for an hour and a half. I ain't picky, bro. Whatever you choose, bro. I ain't picky. <laughs> nah, man. But, yo, we got we to gotta do something when you're down here in Miami, man. Get you on the show when, when, when you're down here. Because I want to do a live show with you guys here, with the athletes here eventually, as we continue going from low budget production. To high budget production. <laughs> yeah, for sure, man. For sure. That's what that TLV stand for under my name, Top Flow Business, man. Believe it, man. Yes, you feel me? Hey, man, if y'all haven't yet, follow him on IG, Terrence Plummer. Um, damn, I can't even think of his, his, his teammate. Night. Yeah, Nightbreak. Yeah, Nightbreak. Nightbreak 41. I'm going to drop it in the link, guys. Make sure y'all hit that sub. Make sure you follow him. Uh, he's got, uh, again, bro, if you love a story, got to follow him, man. Trust the process. 
Enjoy the journey, Enjoy the journey my boy. Yo, y'all gonna make me go broke for all this damn merch. Caleb got me with a suit with a jacket. I gotta get merch from him. Y'all gonna make me go broke. Oh, yeah. It's long, bro. It's gonna come back to you. It's gonna yeah, come back to you, my boy. I come out with the merch, uh, well, remember that picture I made for you? That's going yeah. on the shirt. I'm gonna send it to you. That's love, bro. Yeah, that's love, bro. That, that, that picture was hard. All my dogs were telling me it was hard, man. That's love. Yeah. Ah, yeah. No, this one over here giving me shit. He gave me shit for like two days. He's talking about, he's talking about the, the faux faux one. The backward faux faux. <laughs> bro. Oh, the backward faux faux. That was where it did. The backward faux faux where it did. The backward faux faux where it did. That's why I was my only man, bro. And I tried to explain to the original, the original picture was you staring at Josh Gordon. For real? It was a preview to Seattle. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I got you. I got you. You playing Seattle. So yeah. I was like, oh, here it is, right here. That was the original. So yeah, but we point. Yeah, I got you. So y'all were staring at each other. So I had to flip you because you only have pictures facing one way. So like, yeah. I had to flip it. So he goes, Turbo, like, yo, bro, why you full full look like that? So like, bro, that shit backwards, bro. He goes, he ain't gonna like that shit. That shit fool. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I got a lot of likes for that. that wasn't, but that wasn't the one I posted, though. The one I posted was just you dolo with the regular four for a look. Like, I ain't I see it back. That's, that's hard. I be having fun with these things. He be saying I be doing too much with it, but I love it. I send it to you, though. I send it to you now. That, that Josh Gordon one was nuts, too. That Josh Gordon one nuts. Too bad he don't have ID. Yeah, man. <laughs> that's so nuts. But, um, hey, man. Thank you for coming on. We'll have you on again uh, soon enough. And um, hopefully, you know, soon enough, I'll, I'll see a notification that you've been invited to camp. Because I'd love to see you back in the NFL, man. For sure, man. Back in the NFL. Fuck the Redskins, because they've been keeping you. Or the commanders. <laughs> Yo, it's all right, bro. Did you see their mascots? Fuck the pigs. This shit look like, I don't know. <laughs> what you call it? Hootie Tootie? That's all, folks. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Porky the pig. <laughs> oh, yeah, Porky the pig. That's a fucking name. <laughs> oh, man. All right, bro. Well, y'all y'all have a good night. Thank y'all for coming on. Uh, Big Philly out. Good night, guys. Love y'all, boy. Appreciate you. Thank you, man. Peace. 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 Peace.